how do you know how do you know that uh, or if you have the holy spirit how do you know if you have the holy spirit you see the bible teaches us that uh, anyone who accepts jesus christ as the lord and savior receives god's holy spirit at the moment of salvation because the bible tells us in ephesians uh, 113 in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that holy spirit of promise so the moment you believed you got the holy spirit he was sealed in you which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory so the holy spirit is the assurance that we will inherit the kingdom of heaven okay is the assurity that we will inherit and uh, before and up until we inherit that kingdom because uh, before we inherit the kingdom we'll have to have our bodies which are weak redeemed and changed and uh, we we will have to be given new bodies so until when we are given our new bodies at the rapture okay the purchased possession is uh, uh, your spirit and your soul is what has been purchased by God but uh, your flesh is still in the sinful uh, manner so until your body is is a, is a changed is redeemed so that it can uh, be the same as the spirit and soul then the Holy Spirit is there as a guarantee okay so if the Bible tells us that we already have the Holy Spirit the moment we believed, then it means uh, that uh, those who say you don't have the Holy Spirit and you're saved, then there's something which is not right. Because to be a Christian is to have the Holy Spirit living in you. Okay? The Holy Spirit has to live in you as a Christian. You, however, are not in the flesh. Okay? You're not in the flesh but in the spirit let me show you what the bible says uh in the book of romans 8 verses 9 the bible tells us about this it tells us that uh, you are not in the flesh you're in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwells in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his so you can't say you're a christian and you don't have the holy spirit are you seeing the point and uh, Paul, Paul taught the Corinthian church that by the one spirit of God, all believers are united into one body. Okay? We all are united into one body, the body of Christ. That's why we are called the body of Christ, the church. Okay? So you can't be here and you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible tells us we are all baptized into one spirit by one spirit into one body first corinthians uh first corinthians uh 12 verses 12 okay to 13 we can we can read and see we are all baptized into one body by the spirit for as the body is one and has many members and all the members of that one body being made many are one body so also is christ for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. All of us, we are baptized into one body by the spirit. We drank one spirit. Now, when, when, uh, when the whole word of uh, drinking one spirit comes up people may wonder how do we drink of that spirit how do we drink of that spirit the holy spirit how do we do it drinking of the spirit is a metaphor for receiving the holy spirit at salvation okay because uh, you remember what jesus said in the book of john 7 37 to 39 see john 7 uh 37 and we can read to 39 see what jesus talked about drinking in one spirit 
He said, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, and, uh, uh, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. Okay? So where are you drinking? You're drinking from Christ. How? He that believeth on me, as the scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So it, it means if you believe in Jesus through salvation, you have the water of Christ in you. Okay? And then he continues, but this peck of uh, but this spake he of the Spirit, you see, into brackets. Christ is speaking about the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So you see, the only way you can drink of the Spirit of God is at salvation. When you get saved, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Immediately, you you drink uh, from the Holy Spirit and you're baptized into one body, one body, one body of Christ. Okay? Are you seeing uh, how we get the Holy Spirit? So, if you have faith, if you have by faith, of course, uh, received Christ as your Savior, then you have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. But many believers confuse having the Holy Spirit okay and being filled with the holy spirit you see getting the holy spirit or being baptized with the holy spirit happens at salvation okay and all true believers possess the holy spirit as a seal marking them as a child of god ephesians 1:13 remember what we read so being filled <clears throat> with the holy spirit submitting it's basically just submitting to the Spirit's control. Okay? And you try to walk in the Spirit. You try to listen to the Holy Spirit, what He's telling you. And you do exactly that. That is what we call being filled by the Holy Spirit. You walk in the ways of the Holy Spirit. And you continue having faith. Because the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the more you hear the Word of God, like we're doing Bible study right now, and you do the things of God and you avoid temptations and you walk you walk in the ways of the Holy Spirit. How the Holy Spirit is leading you, you walk that way. You don't walk in your pleasures and your the way you feel. Walk in the way the Holy Spirit feels. Then now that is how you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you are you seeing the point? So being filled with the Holy Spirit is an ongoing experience in the Christian life. Okay, it's an ongoing experience in the Christian life. Galatians 5.16 Galatians 5.16 Look at this. The Bible says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would do. But if you be led by the Spirit, you're not, you're not under the law. For the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, her heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. For the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, this is not talking about losing your salvation if you don't walk right. It's talking about inheriting. Now, people really confuse the word inheritance with salvation. Inheritance, it means there are things that you're going to be rewarded in heaven. So if you walk in your flesh, there is nothing for you to inherit. You will not lose your salvation, but you will not inherit the goodies which are in heaven. Because you never walked in the spirit. You walked in your carnal flesh. You enjoyed walking in the flesh instead of walking in the spirit. Are you seeing the point? 
So it's very important that every believer should seek, okay? Every believer should seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit as part of his or her continuing relationship with God. Okay? The Bible tells us, please seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And as the Bible says in Ephesians 5, 8, Ephesians, uh, Ephesians uh, 5, verses 8, see something that the Bible tells us. Uh, is it? No, 5, 18. I wanted to say that. Five, Ephesians 5, verse 18. Okay? It tells us, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Okay? The Holy Spirit is the one who is supposed to fill you. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So how are you supposed to be filled? You speak yourself in psalms. Okay? You, you sing to the Lord. Uh, you, you make melodies in your heart. Giving thanks always for the things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So it's very simple for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. All you need to do is submit yourself to God. Walk how the Holy Spirit is leading you. And uh, read the word of God and sing to God and do, you know, do things. That's why we sing in church. The more you sing and uh, you sing to God and you dedicate yourself to God, you kind of feel the presence of God. And you feel you're close with God. And you feel the Holy Spirit filling you more and more when you listen to some uh, Christian songs and things like that. And when you walk in the ways of God, but when you depart from the ways of God, how do you feel? You feel you're so far from God. Okay? So seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how people are filled, uh, are filled with the Holy Spirit. You're not filled with the Holy Spirit by laying of hands. It doesn't work like that. Because you see some, some, some Christian denominations, teach that the, uh, they teach that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a separate experience from the in feeling okay they teach something a bit different that is like uh, it's a it's a different experience but uh, you have to understand that getting the holy spirit being baptized into the holy spirit and being filled with the holy spirit they are two different things yes but none of them involves being laid uh off you know uh, on hands you have to understand that for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you need to walk in the ways of God. And the more you indulge yourselves in the things of God, the more the Holy Spirit is filling you. Okay? So we are all baptized into one body. Whether it be Jews or Greek, slaves or free, anyone can get the Holy Spirit. We are all baptized into one spirit. That is the initial one. We get the Holy Spirit and we become the members of the body of Christ. And after that, the more we continue doing and walking in the ways of God, the more we are getting filled by the Holy Spirit. Are you seeing that? So, the getting the Holy Spirit is not justified by speaking in tongues and things like that. Yes, you can speak in tongues if you want. But it's not a crime not to speak in tongues. It adds nothing because Paul told us, I can speak in tongues more than all of you, but I would rather prophesy or teach the word of God than speak in tongues because it doesn't edify anyone. It only edifies you alone. So if you think that speaking in tongues is a major thing in salvation, it's not major. It's not forbidden, you can speak in tongues, but... It's not a major thing. You rather speak the word of God and do the word of God than speak in tongues. Because it only edifies you only, not the body of Christ. Okay? Just go and read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The whole of that chapter is talking about speaking in tongues and uh, if they are beneficial or not. Go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verse 1. Read all through. It will tell you that uh, uh, speaking in tongues, it's, it's, it's uh, not a major thing. Okay, so to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be empowered, okay, 
To be filled with the Holy Spirit is to be empowered and controlled by the Spirit. So that you can experience renewal, obedience, boldness to witness and share the gospel. And freedom from the power of sin. So the more you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the more you'll escape sinning. The more you'll be bold. The more you'll do God's work. The more you'll have encouragement. Let me show you. In the book of Acts. In the book of Acts. Uh, 2, 4, 2 verse 4. See what the disciples uh, were doing here. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. That is one way. You will speak in other tongues and uh, I'm not saying speaking in tongues is the major thing. Like I've told you, it's a minor thing when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Okay. So speaking in tongues is just one of the things, but it's, it's, it's one of the least actually, I would say. And... Uh, Still, when we go to Acts, Acts uh, 4, verses 8, see again. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, from this, if this day we examine the good deed done to the important man, by what means he is made whole, blah, 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 blah. Now, what is Peter trying to say here? He was filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking boldly and courageously to the rulers of Israel who are very, you know, they, they could do anything with you. They could finish you there and then. But he was so bold. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. They had uh, put him in a panel and asked him, why are you preaching in the name of Christ and why are you doing this, blah, blah, blah. So he, he, he stands with the boldness. So the Holy Spirit gives you boldness. Okay, the Holy Spirit gives you boldness, a lot of boldness. And the, you're left there wondering, wow, did I speak that? Did I do that? How did, how, how, how did it happen? And also, uh, Acts 4.31, okay, Acts 4.31. I don't know if I can scroll like it. Yes, let me just scroll here. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke, they spake the word of God with boldness. You see, the Holy Spirit is giving boldness and is even shaking things. You see, you see that Holy Spirit gives a lot of boldness and also when we see Acts, I want to show you how the Holy Spirit works and uh, how you can know that you're really infilled with the you're filled with the Holy Spirit. There's in, you're, you're baptized. You, you get the Holy Spirit. You get uh, a part of the Holy Spirit. But the moment you go on, you work the things of God, you, you get filled. See? But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up set steadfastly into heaven, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heaven open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Now this is in, during the stoning of, uh, of uh, Stephen. So Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit until when he's being stoned, he's seeing the heavens open and he's seeing, seeing Jesus standing at the right hand of God the Father. And, and he's like, wow, I can't wait to go to heaven. You see that kind of boldness? Of course, that time is before Saul or Paul got saved. He was a Pharisee. So he was there watching. You see how the Holy Spirit works? He gives you boldness. And also, let me, let me show you uh, maybe two, three other verses. Acts. I just want to show you this so that you can understand how being filled with the Holy Spirit is so important. Okay? And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, has appeared unto thee in the way as thou comest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So you see, here is Ananias. Saul has lost his sight when he was going to Damascus. Jesus has appeared to him and uh, 
and the soul has become blind. And now, Ananias goes there and tells him the gospel. Okay? He tells him, hey, this is what Jesus has told me. And the moment, the moment Paul accepted and wanted to be helped in the ways of God and had this message, immediately scales fell from his eyes. Immediately there fell his eyes as it has been scales and he received his sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. So he got the Holy Spirit immediately he believed. You see, when you get the Holy Spirit, immediately your eyes, your spiritual eyes are opened. Of course, what was opened is there is literal eyes because they were closed. Eh? But this one shows that immediately the Holy Spirit comes in you. There is a change of things, okay? And also Acts. Acts uh, 13 verses uh, 9. I want to show you how the Holy Spirit works and why you, you should uh, envy to be filled more and more with the Holy Spirit. Then Saul who is also called Paul, you see, filled the Holy Spirit, set his eyes on him, and he said, O oh, full of subtly and mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? You see, Paul here is arguing in, in a bold way. He's, he's preaching in a bold way and telling people, you people, you people, you are full of mischiefs, and you're following the ways of the devil, why don't you do what is right? You see, that kind of righteous indignation or righteous anger comes when you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to do things of God. And you don't want to see people doing what is wrong. Okay? You don't want to see people doing what is wrong. And also, the book of Romans, Romans 15, verses uh, 22 Okay, we can read to 23. See also, again, about the Holy Spirit. Uh, Romans 15, 22, 23. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. But now, having no more places in these parts and having a great desire, these years may come unto you. Whensoever I take my journey to Spain, I'll come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way thitherward by you if I be somewhat be uh, somewhat be filled with your company. Now what is Paul trying to say here? He's been hindered and the things have been hindering him from coming. But he has the desire to go and see his brethren in Christ and fellowship with them. You see the Holy Spirit will give you a desire to want to join with other brothers and sisters and to do the things of God and to see how others are doing. But this desire, you'll not get it unless you have the Holy Spirit. When you see people who are just behaving, they don't like the things of God, they don't like the people of God, they don't like helping anything in the church, they don't like things of... You may ask yourselves, are you really having the Holy Spirit? Are you even saved in the first place? Because that desire will come because the Holy Spirit wants you to join with the body of Christ and to see how they are doing and be with them. So, the Holy Spirit is very important. It is also helps you to exhibit the fruits of the Spirit. You can go and read the, whole, uh, the fruits of the Spirit. I don't have time to read that. But go and check the book of Galatians 5, 22 to 23. You will see all the fruits of the Spirit. Joy, peace, long-suffering, all that. You will have all that, okay? But to have the Holy Spirit is also the mark of all born-again Christians. You can know you have the Holy Spirit if you are, in fact, a follower of Christ. So if you're a follower of Christ, then you have the Holy Spirit. Okay? Hope this has helped you to understand. And if you're there and you don't know how you can get the Holy Spirit, then it's very simple. You have to believe the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding uh, why and how Jesus died. Why did Jesus die? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died for our sins. He was buried, rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. 
So he died for our sins. He didn't die for nothing. And how did he die? By shedding his blood. And why was the blood important? The book of Hebrews tells us, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So someone had to shed his blood, and it had to be someone who is innocent. It had not to be any other blood, but an innocent blood. So why is the blood important? Because the Bible says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls so it is only an innocent blood if taken out from the body can make atonement for a soul when you take out the blood that creature dies so why should a creature die because the bible says in the book of romans that the wages of sin is death we have sinned and we deserve to die we have there's no one sinless no one is sinless. We are all sinners. We deserve to die. But one man called Jesus, 2,000 years ago, he laid his life for you. He was innocent. He did nothing. He did no wrong. And he said, whosoever will believe in my death, burial, and resurrection for, for, for his sanctification, then he will be saved. And that man is Jesus. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins and was buried and rose again, my friends, all you need to do is just confess what you believe to Christ. Tell him, Jesus, now I believe that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again. It was not in vain. And once you do that, my friends, you're saved, sealed and sanctified. And right at that moment, you have the Holy Spirit. And continue, continue walking in the ways of God so that this Holy Spirit in you can continue being filled more and more and more and more because you have to remember you are already a member of the body of christ all you need to do is continue being filled with that holy spirit hope this has been a blessing to you if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and also you can share the video so that other people can be able to understand and hear so that they can also be uh, 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 be able to be edified more and also you can subscribe to the channel kindly if you don't mind so that you can also be watching new videos which we post every day and uh, uh, you can be blessed. God bless you and have a blessed time. There are also other uh, links of other videos in the description. Please go and check out those other channels and uh, have a blessed time.